it made it to the consignee. It's a big uh, used equipment dealer. And the freight broker promised me extra money. And of course, to get that, you need a rate confirmation. And so far I only had one. And then the second one when they added um, when they added the truck wash, but that's it. He kept giving me some story about the customer being on the road. And everything was cool. You see all 800 miles, nothing broke. Like some guy was leaving comments uh, because I added this. Like the front part sits on that and <laughs> I guess some people couldn't understand why I couldn't put the bucket down over there. It's because the it's too big, you know? That thing is in the way, I cannot lift it. I am 13.6, I cannot be over height. And there's just, you know, You have to play with blocks, like you need to have an exact block like of that size, you see, but it's tall, it's probably like, I don't know, six inches. Like my blocks are either eight, or I got one that's three. So it just didn't work. So this way I secured that one, and then I use this. So what are we doing now is, while we're waiting, I wanna flip my axle. So now we, we're gonna go through the motions of flipping the axle, boys and girls. So full air over here, position five on the main trailer, right? And then you just, you drain the air, hoping that it'll go down. Yeah, how it should, oh, perfect. You see? Now those pins are... I can take them out. Just basically high pressure over there and no pressure over here. And it does the trick. my next load I don't need this mini monster right so now we just undo this Oh, I got it. I remembered one thing I did not do last time. I'm gonna make sure that these chains are really tight. otherwise when you flip the axle you know the airbags stretch out and then it kind of like crushes them not pretty all right so now let's put this somewhere in here for now I got stopped at the scale. 
Just as my luck would have it. I got up at uh, what? Got up at 5:15, and I told the escort guy. I said, "Be there at. I want to leave at six. Because on top of everything else, I, said, I don't want to deal with scales." And my scientific research on uh, tracopath showed that that scale <laughs> is usually closed from like 2 o'clock in the morning until about 6.30, 6.40. And the tricky part is that the, um, the sunrise is at 6.20. I had to apply my extensive mathematical education from high school to calculate how to, how to time my arrival and we made it you know we made it and then we come there and the, and the sign says open all trucks enter Anyway, I go in, the guy comes out, looks at my permit, goes back in, wait for the green light, comes out, and and my truck is too long, like the scale was kind of like flimsy homemade scale, they, <laughs> they couldn't scale me properly, and the guy says, uh, uh, license registration, bill of lading, IFTA. And I'm like, what the heck, what's going on? Oh, you seem to be over by gross weight compared to what's on your permit. And he was writing down something, trying to calculate the weight. And then I showed him my uh, Virginia permit. I said, it's not me. I said, permit office made a mistake, you see? I said, my Virginia permit is like this. And I showed him a copy of my request that I sent to the to the uh, permit company I, and I said you see this is what I requested this is what I got somebody somewhere made a mistake and the guy went back talked to his colleague and then came back and gave me back my my paperwork and said uh, have a good day sir then I call my escort, I say, we're cool, they let me go. And the guy says, really? He says, that guy that you just talked to, he says, really, usually he's very mean. <laughs> I said, well, it's just, you know, not all people are as beautiful or charming as me. So I guess I got lucky. So then we're driving and there's a sign that says, Powerball, 256, 256 million. And this escort guy says, oh, I'm going to buy that. And I said, well, I want to buy that too because, you know, I feel lucky. Anyway, so let's flip this son of a gun. And... Uh, but actually, wait a second. So my truck is still there. Like once I flip it, it's going to be sitting over here. So I won't be able to... Uh, I'll just leave it like that because I wanted to have the chains because when this thing swings, you know, yeah, it's fine. Let's do it. Because I just emailed the guy again, the broker. I said, so what's happening? Where's my rate confirmation? Oh, I'll call you right back. I said, okay, you do that. Because nobody's going anywhere until Captain Sergey gets paid for his hard labor. Nine days of Christmas. And you see, that's what I took from the boom over there. They'll have to put it back. I'm not touching it. Oh, this oversized piece of Japanese engineering. 
Yeah, so we're gonna grab it, hook up over there somewhere. And see what happens. Which reminds me again, remember when I tried to move it? And uh, my neighbor, Schneider, says, you know how to operate this? Uh, and I said, what's so difficult, you know? It's not that different from a Russian tank T-34. So, see, everything works. Okay, hydraulic controls on. Now, on this one, it's different. I think normally it's this one that picks up the bucket. Let me just... Yeah, see, this one turns the bucket. This one lifts. Wait a second. No, no, that's right, it lifts. scary machine you know like it shakes so that's why I kept the kept the chains oh that's how I can do it yeah I can go in here you can probably just hook up to that piece over there at the bottom Too short now. <laughs> Shoot. I need a longer chain.
been somewhere. And that's it. Now I can just tie it down. But I can fold the fold this thing so that it doesn't scare the neighbors. I believe that's the counterweight probably from this machine. No, I'm just oh you see? Perfect. My the airbags did not get squashed like the previous time they all because they overextend, you know. That's what the purpose of the chain. Uh, very nice. Anyway, so we're gonna pause the video for a second here as I tie down the flip and I'll check with the broker. But uh, I can already take the chains off right because well, maybe I'll wait till I swing this this machine because it goes crazy you know my one last thing I'll do before we switch off I'll just drop the air like that so then it's not gonna the excavator is not gonna move too bad Maybe even release all air. That's and then I'm gonna tie these down. Are we gonna be good? And then of course stand by for part two driving the monster off. But like I said, that's not gonna happen until I have the new rate confirmation. So I might wait a few minutes over here. Yeah, we're recording, so I'm just checking yeah well it's always like this you know you ask you always ask for more money right I was hoping at least they would give me something like I knew they would not agree to my rate because what I actually ask them is uh, I ask them for what I asked her originally you know and, and now this guy says well you know we agreed on this rate and now after the fact and I said well Jesus I like two or three days ago you said you send a different thing but basically I can feel that his customer, which is the guy who bought this machine, like in this yard, he's a very cheap guy. And so he says, uh, basically they're saying, I did not do my due diligence. And I said, wait a second. Do you remember our conversation, like with the broker, right? He would not pick up my phone. So I would, I, I call his number, it rings for like 10 rings and his voicemail comes on. I hang up and I dial him right again. And finally on third, third attempt, he called me but he uh, picked up the phone because it was cell phone oh i'm talking with uh, with the customer and i said so how about it I said i'm not gonna unload unless you give me the new rate confirmation <laughs> okay we can give you 200 dollars and oh and he says the customer says you didn't do due diligence you agreed to this you should have known you knew exactly what you were picking up and i said what do you mean exactly like i knew exactly the machine though but i said i had no idea that it would be a super load in North Carolina that would take 10 days uh, to unload you know like oh and I said do you remember the price I gave you like I saw his price on the load board and I said I can do this for this and that was my due diligence like I knew how much money I wanted but then this guy would not budge you know just added like 100 bucks here 100 bucks there like and I can see that that's why these guys are very cheap because they deal with uh, I don't know used ugly machinery you know like this rusted stuff everywhere but actually I think on a used machinery you make more money than a new machinery right because it's cheap so you can resell it 
you buy it for 10,000 you can resell it for 50,000 you know like try that with a brand new machine because that's already too expensive but anyway so now he just agreed to add 200 dollars more which is better than nothing and he said he'll send me an email because he's driving somewhere uh, he'll send me an email hold on kind of like informal informal confirmation right saying that uh, confirming rate okay and then he says uh, within an hour he'll send me a revised rate confirmation and I'm just gonna type uh, okay please send You knew exactly what you were picking up. Yeah, you guys are smart, you know? You just take a huge big piece of equipment and you put it on the load board at a at a cut throw rate and you hope some idiot will, will will take it. And then of course when the guy complains that he spends 50% of the rate on permits, oh you didn't do your due diligence. You know? It's kinda like going into a coffee shop, right? and the guy all of a sudden the guy has coffee selling for twenty dollars you know you know you don't have to buy right you can go to a different coffee shop you know uh, just if you like our coffee you know if you willing to pay just do your due diligence and then you buy coffee for twenty dollars and then you come back and you say uh how come the next door shop sells coffee for 50 cents Oh, well, you didn't do your due diligence, you know? <laughs> so basically, they're counting on idiots, you know? That's what I'm trying to say. So, uh, please send the... Uh, what? The mic doesn't want to type. The rate sheet when you have a chance. Thank you. And the internet here is like off and on, off and on, you know? But the good thing is that the good news is that I already have a carrier package for my return load. So as soon as I'm done here, I'm gonna dead head to Georgia and make the same money, but on a much easier load. Like I think I mentioned this yesterday, which is just 60,000 pounds legal dimensions. And we're just gonna load it on blocks. And that's it but before i do that i have to receive the rate confirmation so i can send it to my uh, factoring company
different like on the other machines I think it's the other handle okay I don't want to hit this this camera away
Honda is delivered, ladies and gentlemen. And it took only 10 days. What a monster machine. But it doesn't look too bad, right? Nearby. All I gotta do is hide my timbers, hook up back to the trailer and go inside that mansion and sign my, uh, sign my bill of leading. 